Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Front Boards and Four Baggers. I'm Corbin with Corbin's Cornhole Reviews, and of course, Eddie with Cornhole Bag Reviews. Uh, today, we have a fun one. We have a little NFQ spotlight. So we have the Dopes and the JCs. I think those are two of our favorite bags. I know you like the Sendits as well. but mm-hmm. And the Capos. Um, those They're are, all good. And the Capos. Yeah, I haven't thrown the Capos enough yet. We'll get into that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Uh, and then we're actually going to jump into some different grip styles today. Try that one out. So let's start out with the uh, JC here. Do you have a set with you? You do. They're mm, sick. I do too. This colorway. Yeah, but I have the cooler colorway. You do. Look at this rainbow. I mean, come on. Uh, a little backstory behind the JC. So the JC was the first bag made by Anthony Smith and NFQ, which if you guys don't know, NFQ is Anthony Smith on Facebook's brand. You'll see his stuff on the pages. It's like $50 ship bags, which we'll get into, but makes high quality bag. But the JC was his first bag that he made. And he actually told me the story that... Um, his brother was telling him his whole life that he should get it or the last however many years that he should get into making bags because he was making bags for another company. And he's like, you make great bags, man. You should really make bags. So he started making bags and then his brother actually passed away. And so JC was his brother's initials. So that was the first bag nice. that he made, which is this bag. Nice. So it's kind of a cool story behind the bag. And it's a really great bag. I know you really enjoy the bag. and I, I do like him quite a bit. Yeah. It's, and I didn't know that story. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, See so yeah, the JC, we're going to jump into stats here. The slow side is a um, four to five, I'd say. I mean, mm-hmm. it really depends on humidity, and you know that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, super humidity dependent, but typically about four to five. Fast side is going to be a seven. Um, our slow side is reverse suede. So think of uh, who's got slide it. Slide like rights. 50 cal. Um, slide rights use it. It feels different to sl- than a slide, right? Yeah, me. their new one though, the 2.0 they used at oh, the um, Throwdown uses reverse. Yeah. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. All right, so that slow side is the uh, reverse weight, and the fast side is that favorite number seven material, the seven speed material that you guys know I love. That you know, Chaos utilizes the Reckless, the Viking. Uh, what else do we say? The Dopes also share it. The Sendits uh, as well. Sendits, uh, you said Widows as well. Widow slow, no dots. Yeah. So, ton a ton of bags use it it's just a really really nice material um it is a smaller disc fill which we both love love the feel of this bag and they're 50 dollars shipped from anthony direct and he gets them out typically next day yeah so um what do you think about them eddie um the jc's so we'll get into the dopes i like the dopes a little bit more but the jc's i think i struggle with only for the fact is the area that i live in is always humid um, and, and like you were just saying that reverse suede, if you've ever played with a suede or reverse suede bag, humidity nukes suede. But I, when I went out and recorded my video, which me and Corbin both have reviews of this video up, I got a really low humidity day and they played awesome. And, uh, especially if you're used to like a carpet bag or like you want a pure block push bag, like this will stop before the hole and it is a pain in the ass to get around. Like it, like yes. that, that reverse suede really does stick up, but at the same time, it's a whole, f- it's still whole friendly, which doesn't necessarily make sense, which I think goes into that fill. Um, but it plays really well. And the fast side, it's a controllable push side. Like it pushes well, it'll go in and around, but it's not off the back, like, you know, the game changer material, that pro sniper material, it's a little more yes. controllable, which is, I know why you really like this material on a carpet bag. Cause it's powerful enough without being crazy punishing. Yeah. Um, in terms of like the quality of the bag, I mean, Anthony makes a really nice bag. I really like his template. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's not too fat. Uh, the it's fill, just right. it's, yeah, it's, it's just a really comfortable bag to play with. I nuked mine with softener to get that reverse suede really loose to at the point now that i really enjoy them i mean it's not super floppy but it's really comfortable now because when you get them this reverse suede is stiff but it's um, stiff. but i mean i i know you said in your review too it just it just does what you want it to do i mean it's a nice mid of the ground mm-hmm. bag and if you have low con- humidity and you still want to play block push in the fast conditions it'll do that for you absolutely what do you think that's i agree with you i i really like them i you know it's not as humid here uh, we, we get it, but not nearly as bad. You know, a lot of times I can play a slightly stickier bag and have it do what I want. And mine, I might even be a little floppier than yours, but I do like them. Yeah. Uh, it just, it's that perfect flop for a handhold. They just, they play really, really nicely. That slow side is, it's more geared toward like a lower hard thrower. I'd say Agreed. I think the loftier throwers might kind of struggle with it a little bit because it's just going to literally loft in and just hit and stop. Mm-hmm. If you do have humidity, it is glue. 
So you're going to be switching bags. I mean, that's just how a lot of bags are mm-hmm. anyway, but you could flip to fast side, but the fast side is going to be affected by moisture as well. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a humid bag, but like it's definitely a really good indoor bag. And I'm not saying that advanced players can't use it, but it's a great beginner bag. Yeah, no. And and I would say, I mean, I, I said in my review and I talked to Anthony about this too, is I felt like I could just throw it like hard. Like I could oh, like yeah. follow through and just throw it at the hole. Like I didn't feel like I was oh, timid yeah. at all, which I think actually led into me throw liking it and throwing it better mm-hmm. is because of the fact that I was always just throwing it and following through it at, at the shot, which, and being aggressive, I think, especially like you said, as a newer player too, can help you with fundamentals a lot and consistency is you're not worried about launching it off the back of the board every single time. And I, I mean, I think this bag will gear really well towards a player that wants to play block and push in conditions where it's hot, you know, Arizona, like places where it's hot and dry and like every bag is fast. This bag sure. is whole friendly, but still can block, which I think Absolutely. is what it's going to shine at. But it's still a very if, good bag. If you get one hanging on the hole, it's not stuck there. No, that's no. what I like about it. Mm-hmm. it. It might be hanging. You're able to grab it still. So, yeah, it, it's not a clogger. And I haven't had any issues with that. It's just it's a really nice bag. I like mm-hmm. it quite a bit. Yeah. So. And, uh, and the dopes are very similar. So we'll get into the dopes. But yes, let's jump right into those. Why not? Uh, do you have your set with you? I got the cooler yeah, colors us, again. I got, us go. I got the pink and orange, all our bags today. which I think is cooler. <laughs> oh, I like mine a little better. What color is your carpet? Orange, bro. Kind of like peachish orange. Okay. Yeah. And mine's navy, which I actually thought was cool. I thought it was black at first, but it's actually a navy carpet, which is really nice. Um, the dope is really up there with some of my favorite carpet. You know, I, I throw it quite a bit, actually. Um, speeds here, we have... Very similar speeds to the JC, actually. It is yep. a four to five on that slow side and a seven on the fast. Uh, I would call it more of a four with how I've been playing with them and what I've noticed. They stick uh, quick, it's definitely yeah. more of a four for me. And the seven is, I mean, obviously spot on. Um, the carpet, I'm not sure I felt this carpet on other bags. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's possible that I might, but... It could it be the color good. too. I, I feel like I feel like this is that cross stitch carpet that we see on um, a lot of. It's not the herringbone, okay. but I feel like it's the same no. stitch at least that a lot of the carpet that you see. Um, the color, it's I, almost like a tighter knit though. You see, I, and when I talk to some different manufacturers, I've noticed that same thing with like the Surefire material and everything. Depending on what color you get, because they get this color stock, they're sure. slightly different. Like they're sure. not because okay. of the way that it's printed on or something, depending on the okay. color you get. So like for Surefire, for example, the white one is a little thinner than the blue and the gray and the pink just gotcha. because of the ink. So it could be just this. We're used to all gray carpet all the time on all these bags. This That's one's true. colored. Yeah. And it could be slightly different. Yeah. I love how it plays, though. And then, you know, the fast side is that that awesome seven. Same same on the uh, JC. Yep. Chaos, Reckless, you know, Widow mm-hmm. Beeb, all that stuff. Stuff you guys are used to. Uh, it does have that nice disc fill. It's a nice medium full bag, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are also 50 shipped from Anthony. So um, this bag holds kind of a special place in my heart because it's the first bag I ever flopped. Hey! <laughs> That's a true story. I tell Anthony that all the time. It is the first bag I ever flopped. Um, mine are decently floppy. Mine are more than They're yours, not bad. But- it, yep. It just, it depends how I grab it. I mean, sometimes it just crazy flops right over. Sometimes it's kind of holds its form just depends, mm-hmm. but I really like where it is right now. It is a perfect, like perfect handhold. This is one of those bags. I know you're like kind of a fill snob, right? So this is one of those bags that's like you grab it and it feels good. It's comfortable. Oh yeah. The fill, the materials, the overall template, like you brought up. I mean, it's, Anthony makes just a very, very high quality bag. I like them quite a bit and I recommend them to a lot of people that ask me, Hey, I want to get into carpet. What should I try? It's a great intro carpet, $50 carpet. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you should try actually. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, I love the bag. I love how it plays and it's just, I mean, it's just nice. And my comparison. So like when I, when we talk about carpet, cause this is a carpet bag, it because of the fill, it's not as thick as normal carpet. So if you felt the BG bag, it's not that big. And right. the flat disc fill, like you can flop it, but at the same time, it's a forgiving carpet. Like I have it 
fly up the board oh, pretty incredibly. true for me and whatnot. So like if you're looking at trying this material, it's a really good one to start with because it's it's so friendly to play with. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason Anthony, we even I even have this bag is because I reviewed the JC and I said the thing that I liked the most about the JC was that I could be aggressive and throw it hard at the hole. And he goes, if you think you could be aggressive with the JC, then you need to try the dope. Because, get the dope. Yeah, because he because he's like he's like because that's exactly how this is the dope is his favorite bag, Anthony's favorite bag yes. that he plays with yep. personally. And he said, I feel the exact same way about the dope. You could stay aggressive with it, but it's slightly more hole friendly, in my opinion, than the JC. It holds up a little bit. I, I mean, like when I throw these things, it's like kind of like crazy hole friendly for a carpet. Like, I mean, it gets close, and it'll like slide in my review a couple with the slide in the back. Yeah, I right. mean, it's a really right. friendly carpet. Um, that I like a lot. I really like the design. He actually just came out with a new design that I really like as well, some reds and blues. Yeah, and, I saw those. Those are cool. And at the price point, I mean, like, man, it's really hard to get anything carpet at 50 bucks. I mean, you look at yeah. any other brand that makes multiple bags, like in terms of like not carpet and carpet, carpet's always like $10 mm-hmm. more expensive than the normal bag. Um, and you could look at Reynolds, but it's you're still spending 60, 65 shipped. And yeah. It's, and it's a little I different. Like better. I like these more. I like them it's a little bit bigger than a Reynolds bag, but in a really comfortable way. And like you said mm. with the materials, sorry, maybe not a bigger, but like, like you said with the materials, they're both like so soft and comfortable to hold. So and nice. like, I and I think with that fill too, it's like every time I grab it, the grip feels the exact same. Like I never feel like I, you know, I'm never like, oh man, I got to find my grip. It's always like I grab it and I have a grip and it's comfortable. Yeah, have it. Yeah, and and so I mean, I love throwing this bag. I mean, like w- I can just be aggressive with the bag and throw it hard, and and it, at the same time, it lays a really good block, you know, because it mm-hmm. will stop at that four or five range that you're talking about. Um, yep. I don't know. Overall, I just really like it. <laughs> I don't know. They're wonderful. It's I, I like his bags quite a bit. I, I don't have too much experience with those uh, capo or capo, whatever you want to call yeah. them. I they're haven't fast. thrown those quite enough yet to get them broken in, but <laughs> they're I know fast. fast as hell. They're really fast. <laughs> He's using a new material on yeah. those, on the 10s that I haven't felt on any other bag. Any other, um, but it scoots. They're lightning fast, yeah. I mean. Yes, they're ridiculous. My buddy throws like a moon ball. And so like, like he has send it's and the send it's were sticking for him, which is crazy. And then, so sure. then I had him throwing capos and he's like, man, these are great. And I'm like, yeah. Cause you throw it like 40 feet in the air. <laughs> I was like, and yeah. they're still like sliding up the board, like nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're insane. Yeah. Freddie. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, but Anthony friend, he has, you know what he's got JC's dopes, capos, craniums, send it's and tags. And right now he has tags and send it's and dopes. I think available. He's making more of everything, but I mean, the tags are the exact same carpet that we're talking about with a game changer fast. This uses the, uh, you know, the, the seven that we're talking about. So he just make, he has a ton of options all for 50 bucks, all using the materials that everybody else is using, all using the feel that the fill that we like, you know, it's the surefire fill, that small disc fill. It's the really comfy. Fill. I mean, so when people say like not, I mean, yes, it's not ACL stamp, but it's a great bag. It's a high quality bag. Yeah, it's it's worth it. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's I would have no hesitation throwing this in a non-sanctioned event. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, so I mean, that was the one the one negative, though, you said in your view is me too, is the non ACL stamp. I mean, a lot of people yeah. are looking for that, but I mean, yeah. for 50 bucks, you have a carpet bag that you can learn how to play with and try out and Absolutely. use. I mm-hmm. mean, that's a pretty solid thing you can do, especially with the prices we're seeing carpet go for now. Sure. Um, but getting into that, I think talking about a carpet bag, there's a different kinds of grips that you use when you're throwing certain shots with a carpet bag, as well as the grip that me and you normally use when we play. So sure. we can get into different grips. The caveat to this, there's tons of variations to these grips within like the way you hold it, what's comfortable, the angle you're holding it at. These are just the basic, so these are just the basic, what, when I talk to people, the most common couple that I see, and then slight variations off of them that all are meant to do the same thing in general, which is throw the bag flat. I mean, a couple of these do it slightly differently to utilize different shots, but the whole goal is get the bag flat. And when I've taught people how to play in the last couple months or so, 
Uh, I usually start with the first grip we'll talk about with the one we use, but I've actually mm-hmm. rotated through a couple different grips until you find the one that's comfortable for them or that it comes off their hand flat naturally, which a lot of the time that's kind of what you're looking for is don't change anything else while you throw what grip helps you get the bag is flat. So make sure you keep okay. all these in your options for something to try. Um, even if you ha- already have one that maybe isn't working for you, try these options because all of them can be used uh, with slight variations. So the first grip we'll get into is the one me and you use. <clears throat> you called it the 50-50 grip. Uh, yeah. It's just a good way to put it. I mean, in my how to throw flat video, I just kind of explained it as the bag's hanging. Your fingers are in the bottom. The bag's having hanging halfway over the front of your fingers and half in your palm. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a nice solid handle with your fingers halfway into the bag. Um, yep. I said in my how to throw a flat video, I think it's the most natural way to start holding it. I mean, it's you just it's just kind of if you grab the bag, that's kind of how you end up grabbing it usually. Um, you know, you feel for me, it makes the best handle. It's like a really solid handle. You don't have to grip it crazy hard. You can grip it soft or hard. I mean, it's it it's solid in your palm, right? So you have a really solid grip on it. Um, I I would say it's the most common grip you see people using uh, in normal events. Like uh, there's a lot of people transitioning to some of the other ones, but I would say in the grand scheme of things, especially older players, that's probably the most common grip used. And uh, there's many variations. So one of the variations that, or you can go through the variations and show them, but the three finger grip, which is the yep. exact same as this grip, but you're not having the pointer finger on the bag. I say, as you go through them, I can just show them actually. Yeah. So might as well. So I got trying to get a better camera angle when I'm utilizing 50, 50, I do a couple flips, you know, and I, and then I just kind of grab. So I'm basically 50, 50 right there. That's my natural grip right there. I just yep. give it a couple little wobbles and then I'm throwing my back. So 50, 50, just like that, you know, thumb pretty much in the center. Yep. And I'm, I'm not a hard squeezer. So it's just kind of sitting there. Um, you know, if you grab it a little harder, it doesn't change the grips, just harder grab sure so next we had uh three finger three finger yeah so pretty much same as 50 50 but you're kind of going to just chill with your pointer finger mm-hmm. out i mean you're going to be pointing it where you're throwing yep. you know so you just leave that one hanging and i actually did this for the last i i've since gone back to normal 50 50 but i did this for like a couple straight months because i was finding okay. that my pointer finger was the last thing catching on the bag when i was throwing it so i felt like when i had my Makes pointer sense. finger off everything was releasing at the same point. I felt like I wasn't getting caught. So that's why you might see people doing it is just a release point thing, um, sure. which for me is what I was doing it. Um, the pointer finger wrap is actually one that I see a lot of people doing, which is, weird to me. <laughs> it is weird, but it's the 50, 50 that Corbin was just saying, except instead of your pointer finger being off the bag, you're wrapping it around yep. the front of the bag. So you're like gripping it right on that seam, which I don't know if it's for them. They ha- think they get more spin out of it, or um, maybe you're outside the bag, so it's kind of like you're not getting caught, but it's more comfortable. Um, I'm not sure exactly yeah, why. A little different. Yeah, but I, I do see a good amount of people utilizing it, so bring it mm-hmm. up. And then uh, and then closer or more full. So, you know, some people might do the 50-50, but all closer to the edge, which I talked about mm-hmm. in my video. You get more natural spin the farther you are to the edge, but it's a little less comfortable because you have, like, less beads. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. more, so more than half which you're going to get less spin, but maybe if you have bigger hands, it's, it's a, for me, it feels yeah. like a big chunker, <laughs> yeah. but, but there are some people that do it. <laughs> Could help with the accuracy or something. You know, it might take spin off, but it might help with the accuracy. Of maybe it. if the boards are really fast, it takes a little spin off. It stops yeah. earlier. Like who knows necessarily why, but there are people that do it. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> you've been since getting into the flop shot a lot more. You've been like obsessed That's with true. carpet, like annoyingly obsessed yeah. with carpet, but in uh, a good way. I know it's so bad, <laughs> but I love it. I and, love uh, it. so you've been getting more into, you throw the butterfly grip when you're going for that flop roll shot. So Correct, you want to explain your grip for butterfly? Yeah. And it, I think I'm kind of unique in that sense that I think butterfly throwers typically just throw butterfly all you know, the time. Yeah. At, if you look at Jamie Graham or I'm pretty sure Trey Birchfield pretty much utilized Eric Davis, the butterfly. Yeah. Eric Davis, they utilize that butterfly, but they throw it for every shot. Yeah. I don't find it comfortable to throw for every shot. And for me, it's like kind of making a different muscle memory yeah. so that I know what I'm doing for that shot. Sure. Right. So that's your so, roll shot grip. So it's easier to correct. know that's what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm still going to start it off with my normal flips just because I'm kind of 
anal OCD, right? I'm always flipping the bag when I'm standing on a <laughs> board. That's I don't know if yeah, I mean I everyone too. does yeah. it, right? You're you're sitting there spinning. It's like shuffling cards and card game and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And of course the seam has to be in the same spot every oh, time. Oh, it's got a seam. Mine's the exact to the outside of my hand. Exact yeah. same way. Some yep. people go seam forward. It's you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, but seam in the same spot. So I do a couple flips, but then I literally lift up and I settle all the beads. So for the people listening, yes. he has the seam of the bag, like the in between the two materials, basically running along the finger lining of like mm-hmm. your knuckle line. My so seam, yep. completely the vertical. Seam is basically just inside my hand, but the bag is completely vertical. I settle all the beads and I do slide my hand back a little bit too. So you'll see I don't have the front of the bag at all. Okay, sure. I kind of I kind of go bottom two thirds. It's just me personally. But then you stick your thumb in, and you pinch and pull down. You see how it makes wings. Yep. That's, so that's where it gets the name. Yep. It gets, the that's name, where it gets the name butterfly. So in the back, it's not, you know, whatever, but you know, and I don't squeeze super hard on it. I squeeze it a little harder, but squeeze that thumb in there. And that's just a full clump of beads in yep. my hand right there. Would you say you so, squeeze harder than 50, 50? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause you really got to hold, cause you're trying to hold those beads in that position. Correct. So then they hit I the board and trigger. This, if I just barely grab it and then I go to throw it, as soon as I go into my backswing, those beads are going to fall forward. Yep. Yep. Sure. I don't really want that. So I'm, I'm dropping it down, squeezing kind of hard. And then the beads aren't shuffling as I'm going for my throw. Sure. Um, this, this to me helps with a roll, a flop, anything in that nature, because it kind of lends to the pushing motion that I use to do that. Sure. Cause you have a bigger clump in your hand. So you're going for you know, not a scoop and put it's, it's so hard to explain how to even do it. Well, I, I also to feel like to flop and it just, it's going to be the most difficult video of my life. <laughs> I but also feel like you have a bigger clump of beads that when it hits the board, it's slinging a bigger clump of beads forward, which is triggering that roll action. That's, possibly. that's part of it also. Yes. Which is, yep. So it just, it just helps my release angle. Um, but this grip actually does help a lot of people with consistency mm-hmm. with spin, yep. you know, with actually, with their accuracy, it can help a lot of different things. It just depends how you prefer to utilize it. Sure. And th- that'll actually go into the, uh, so the next trip, I see a lot of people, like a lot of the good players around my area do, I'm going to call it the thumb pull, but it's basically a butterfly, but like halfway in the bag. And you're not necessarily setting the beads. Like I have my fingers in the same spot as 50, 50, but see how the bag right now is folding over my fingers. Instead of the bag folding over my fingers, I'm going to pull back with my thumb kind of triggering a mini butterfly in the middle of the bag. But now the beat, the bag is not falling over my hand. Like that, that pressure is being held on here. Yeah, it's and not really floppy. anymore. No, no, it's being pulled. I'm holding that pressure and that grip it, for me, it triggers a lot more spin when it's coming off the hand. The okay. bag's like already flat in hand for me. And I feel like it triggers a lot more spin, but a lot of people throw this way near me. I call that the thumb pull. The other one is the thumb press which is instead of pulling back to your hand, you're basically putting your thumb in the middle and pressing it to your pointer finger. So now you're getting the same sort of grip, but it's it's a little less back towards your palm and more up towards your hand. So you kind of have a straight grip on the bag. But there's there's that's kind of a variation on each other, but a lot of the people locally either do that pull or that pressing motion on the edge of the bag, which I think lends to the higher spin rate for them or, or the bag comes off a little bit flatter, but that is another grip if you wanna try. It is actually pretty comfortable to throw. I switch to thumb press sometime if I really need to throw a flat bag because I find it's easier for me to throw a flat spinning bag. I just haven't worked on it enough to understand, you know, distance control and whatnot. But sure. I do find it easier to throw it perfectly flat. Like when I was throwing my widows with the dots and they were kicking, I was like, all right, I'm throwing thumb press because it was completely flat. Um, but it is another comfortable grip. Um, and then kind of the last one, which is I, I call it the full hand wrap, but it's I watched a video of U.S. Cornhole where the woman was talking about she basically settles the beads like you do for a flop. But her pointer and thumb are on one side of the crease (laughs) and her other three fingers on the back of the bag. And she almost had this big like bear claw grip on the bag. Yeah. And then you're coming. And and for me, I feel like if I look at the bag and it needs to go flat, this is the one grip where you don't finish hand to the sky. You finish almost hand forward. So I don't know if this is lending to like you don't have to do that full wrist flattening motion and you're doing more of a yeah. forward pushing motion kind of thing. Yep. Um, but it definitely feels like I got a big grip on this back. I mean, it is oh, it's, you it have is everything full right in the there. palm. I mean, I can feel it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are grabbing everything. So 
I mean, hopefully you guys got an understanding of there's a lot of different ways to hold a bag full of plastic beads. Um, yes. and, and they all come off the hand flat. You know, I would say, I mean, if you watch a guy like Eric Davis throwing those crazy flops, crazy cuts, or even Ryan Windsor, they utilize that butterfly. Um, yeah, it's just, I think, I think it gives them that easier to get to wrist angle to get it, you know, tumbling at the angle you need Absolutely. to tumble at, to do the cuts, to do the flops and the rolls and whatnot. Because I mean, you got to think if you're stacking the beads vertically in your hand and then gripping the bags already on tilt way more than if you're like this i mean like it's it already up is. here to the point where it's yeah. like if i was trying to get at that angle 50 50 it's almost too far like it's very uncomfortable to get to that angle of the bag mm -hmm. so it makes a lot of sense that people use that but you know i i would say try all the different variations of 50 50 first try yeah. the basic one try a finger wrap if that's more comfortable try a three finger um, and then try the butterfly, you know, if you can, I, I know a lot of younger kids coming up that I play with around here are utilizing the butterfly. And I don't know if it's because, I mean, they whip it a lot more, get their hand a lot flatter. If you have that dexterity to be throwing it like that, more powerful, especially with carpet, they're throwing a lot harder, a lot flatter. There's a lot of people using it and it seems to be really good. A lot of the good pro players are starting to use it now too. So a lot just, of good options. It's funny you, you brought up the angle and like, I literally sitting at my table i just like held my wrist down to like a normal throwing motion with different grips so like, I, I hope it comes across on camera actually I try not to smoke my head like with a 50 50 i know it's the lights right there above my head it's like when i'm going down natural like i'm pretty much the bag is flat yeah right this is where i would hold it i'm just you know lifting my arm straight up yeah this is how i would hold it and then release yep when i'm doing butterfly and i go to drop it down yeah, it's already at an angle. I'm already, I'm already tilted. Yeah, you're not so, having to rotate your wrist at 45 extra degrees. Correct, and like to even get this flat, I would have to literally turn my wrist over, which is not a natural motion in the throw. So that actually makes a whole lot of sense why you can manipulate the bag so much more using a butterfly because you're already, you're kind of like already it's, tilting it's the bag like at the hard beginning. To explain. You're just yeah. you're in the right position because your hand is in a similar position, but the way you're gripping the bag is in a totally different position. Yeah. Basically so if you finish it the exact off, same way with both grips, one's gonna yeah. come off front tilt up doing your roll, one's gonna come off flat. Yeah. And even like a little on end possibly yeah. I mean Be because just, of the starting angle. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. I guess we need to do a <laughs> podcast on mechanics, don't we? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently we we need to work uh, on Corbin's throwing motion because he doesn't understand oh, angles. No. This is too much geometry for Corbin at this what time of night? For me right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I got a flat bag now. I've worked on that. Yeah, you I know got that flat. It wobbles, but it's flat. That's fine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, my wobbles more than yours. So, <laughs> hell yeah, it does. No, that's actually kind of wild. I mean, that's very cool that you know I even learned something today. That's awesome. Well, hopefully you guys can take this information and keep using it. You know, we've talked about fills, materials, stances, grips. This is episode five. What else did we talk about? Oh, what else did we do? Um, yeah, materials, fills, stances. Grips. And then what's the last one? Shot types. Shot types. There we go. So now... <laughs> This is too many episodes, uh, but hopefully now we're building you a picture of kind of like from the ground up, all the different things that we're thinking about going into just throwing it and then thinking about throwing it, you know, yeah. and then we'll have to go into, you know, strategies and all this other kind of stuff. But this is all the basics and hopefully can help you guys build a foundation that you feel comfortable throwing the bag and throwing it in a way that you can stay consistent and, you know, mm -hmm. do the things that you want to with the bag. And, you know, if you're, if anyone's trying to learn that flop roll shot, that butterfly, I mean, Corbin's been spending how much time practicing this butterfly grip just to so be able to much, do this dude. flop roll. But I mean, it, it goes down to, you know, adjusting your fundamentals to do different kinds of things. So, mm -hmm. but I think that is a good place to end this podcast today. We appreciate you guys stopping by for another episode. Hopefully you learned something as Corbin did. And, uh, <laughs> And we'll catch you guys next week for the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks.